Hello and welcome to another video from TLDR News and another coronavirus topic. As much as we may hate it as a news topic, we can't really expect it to go away anytime soon. And that's actually the topic of today's video. What if this simply doesn't go away? What if we can't find a coronavirus vaccine? What happens to the world then? If you want to support our channel and the content we make, please consider backing us on Patreon. There's a whole variety of tiers and perks, but signing up could get you exclusive merch, early access to videos, and the power to vote on video topics. Tiers start at just $3 a month, and all donations go straight back into the videos. So if you're interested, there's a link in the description, as well as more information about how we're funded, and a link to give a one-off donation. The first thing worth noting is that although it isn't frequently discussed, experts around the world, including some of the UK scientists, have made it clear that this is a very real possibility. Professor Chris Whitty, the UK's chief medical officer, has claimed that it's possible that a vaccine might not be found by the end of the year. In fact, he said that the possibility of a vaccine in 2020 is incredibly small. And his colleague, Patrick Valance, the government's chief scientific officer, has gone even further suggesting that you can never guarantee there'll be a vaccine. It's a difficult thing to do. As an article in CNN explains, there have been multiple times where vaccines have not been found. Over the decades, politicians and scientists have promised vaccines to HIV, but still, decades later, we're left without one. In fact, this was a point echoed by Dr Hilary Jones, a regular on the show Good Morning Britain. He pointed out that a Spanish flu vaccine was never found a century ago, and that we have never found a vaccine for any form of coronavirus. For example, SARS and MERS, which spread in the last 20 years, still have no vaccine. He also pointed out that the only virus we've ever completely eradicated was smallpox. So historically, it doesn't look all too promising. But there are things to consider that might make a vaccine to coronavirus more likely. The first is fairly simple and obvious. The attention and sheer work being put into a vaccine for coronavirus is unheard of, due to it affecting nearly every country on Earth and touching every single person's life in a profound way. The resources being put into a vaccine is something that's not been done before with other vaccines. The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation alone is said to be putting billions of dollars into researching seven possible vaccines for the coronavirus and the disease it causes. We've discussed their involvement in the crisis before, but safe to say, the foundation putting all its efforts towards COVID is a big deal, especially considering how successful they've been at eradicating polio in many countries. Secondly, we can find hope in the fact that we're already finding some positive results. For example, Moderna has been working on a vaccine that has recently been found to produce antibodies similar to those found in people who have had the virus. Additionally, it's been found that this potential vaccine is safe in humans. The UK government has even promised to purchase 30 million doses of the vaccine if it proves to be successful. So there clearly are promising signs in relation to the vaccination process. And thirdly, unlike other viruses such as HIV, the coronavirus doesn't seem to mutate rapidly. Although it's still said to mutate, it does seem that COVID-19 mutates slowly and does not necessarily mean that it will become more deadly. And in fact, there's a possibility that it could mutate to become less deadly. Regardless, this slow mutation is very good news for creating a vaccine. In fact, Dr John Rose, a researcher at Yale University who's working on a vaccine, has said that finding a vaccine for this coronavirus is similar to finding a vaccine for measles, mumps and rubella. This could be a good analogy, because the vaccine for these diseases is effective, because although they do mutate, they don't mutate quickly or enough to escape the effectiveness of the vaccine. So scientists are hoping that the same could be true of the coronavirus, allowing us to create a vaccine that works despite future mutations. So there are reasons to be hopeful for a vaccine, and although historically vaccines have not always been possible, there's clearly a reason to believe that this time could be different. But if we don't get a vaccine, is the world condemned to being a grim and permanent state of total lockdown? Are we doomed to provide newspaper columnists with the perfect ammunitions to draw comparisons to 1984? Well, as you probably guessed, not necessarily. Although it's likely that we will remain with social distancing for a very long time, drugs could be developed to treat the disease. 
and this could reduce the mortality rates of the disease. Think about HIV. We've not found a cure for that yet. But people who are diagnosed are given antiretroviral medications, which aim to stop the virus from replicating in the body. As the NHS states, people with the virus can lead long and healthy lives, which compared to what the virus did to people in the 80s and 90s, shows how far we've come thanks to these drugs. We've already said that this virus isn't comparable to HIV, but drugs could be developed to reduce the deadliness of this disease, similar to the way that drugs were developed to ease the deadliness of HIV. For example, hydroxychloroquine is being tested to see whether it could ease symptoms of the coronavirus. It's seriously important to note here that this has not been shown to be effective or safe. As the Food and Drug Administration in the US warns, even claiming that it could cause heart rhythm problems in COVID-19 patients, recommending against its use besides in medical environments. However, testing is taking place on this drug right now, and it could prove effective. Other drugs that could prove effective in reducing mortality rate could be anti-blood clot drugs, as are being researched by the Brighton and Sussex Medical School. However, finding drugs that make the disease easier isn't necessarily the way to end this disease either. Just because the symptoms are made less deadly, the disease would still spread. And that means that the R number wouldn't necessarily change, and that healthcare systems would still be put under huge pressure, unless the drugs are so effective that people wouldn't require hospital treatment at all. That's not to say that finding a drug shouldn't be a priority. They'll still help make people's lives with the disease easier, and decrease mortality rate if proved to be effective. As hinted by Rob Pinchetta at CNN though, one way to make living with the virus easier could be contact tracing. Undoubtedly, you've heard something about contact tracing already, most likely in the context of South Korea, the A-grade contact tracers. Through this policy, they've managed to reduce daily new cases to single digits and relax a lot of their already lenient lockdown policies. Here in the UK, the government is trying to adopt the contact tracing approach. The first way they're doing this is through an app that's been developed by NHS X. This app notifies anyone that may have come close enough to someone who's been displaying COVID symptoms, such as in a shop or on public transport, using the Bluetooth signals on your smartphone. If you do come close enough to an infected person, then you'll be told to self-isolate. There are big problems with this though, from technical limitations to concerns that apps like this could violate user privacy, especially the NHS X app, which is far less secure than the one proposed by Apple and Google. For a more in-depth discussion on the NHS X app and the Google and Apple solution, we have a video out on it which we've linked below. As we discussed in that video, this could be a solution if we don't find a vaccine, as it helps us better manage the virus's spread potentially allowing people to return to semi-normal even if a vaccine isn't discovered, with people only temporarily quarantining themselves if they find themselves notified that they've been near an infected person. In addition to this, the UK Prime Minister has now announced a huge manual contact tracing scheme, which would employ 25,000 people and be able to track 10,000 new cases a day. This is a manual approach, and it could helpfully run alongside the app. Rob Pinchatter at CNN paints a fairly comprehensive picture of what societies would look like if we failed to get a vaccine. He points out that yes, we would see lockdowns lifted gradually, but it would always be with the knowledge that it could be reimposed. People would need to self-isolate on instruction if they found they'd been close to someone who tested positive, as dictated by contact tracing apps. To put it bluntly, we would be given some freedoms back but these freedoms would be heavily conditional. Life wouldn't go back to how it was before the virus, and a new kind of normal would emerge. But society would need to be responsible and understand that as long as the virus exists, measures should always be taken to stop its spread. As we've tried to stress in this video, although it looks promising that we could find a vaccine, it's not a dead certainty. And if we do fail to do so, coming to terms with a new normal could become essential. Following government guidance and following the laws and advice of your government is the best way for us to currently stop the spread and allow the lockdown to be lifted more quickly. We're clearly all hoping for a vaccine, and there have been really good reasons to be optimistic so far. But even if a vaccine is developed, it could be a long time until everyone gets immunised, and in the meantime, we're going to have to stay safe and stay socially distanced. What do you think about this? 
Do you think that the effort, money and enthusiasm will prevail and lead to a vaccine? Or do you think that we'll have to deal with the virus for years to come? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. And of course, you can always get involved in the conversation over on Discord. One last thing, I really do recommend that you check out the video we made on contact tracing. It's something that we'll likely all have to get used to, vaccine or not. And despite the video not having a ton of views, I honestly think it's one of the best ones we've made. As I mentioned a moment ago, you can find a link to that video in the description below. If you want to be notified when we release other videos, then be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we post. Also, if you want more from us, you can find us across all social networks simply by searching for TLDR News. And lastly, a special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible.